so he went by the ID Wu Mian. And first game was Polypoid. Here he is in the top right. Here I am in the bottom right. Uh, so yeah, anyways, I like uh, the the bracket got drawn. I looked at the bracket. I noticed second round was scan. But first round, I checked his ID. Uh, he has, he's 2,500. Uh, I mean, maybe he has, maybe he goes higher than that. But uh, he's at least a 2,500 Zerg player. So going into it, I didn't have like big expectations, but I just wanted to play my best game. So, anyways, let's uh, let's just take a look at it. I did my I wanted to play like pretty standard games and just like optimize as best I could, right? So I go ahead and scout the second SCV. I get up here and I watch for that layer timing, and it is it was like a 255 layer. So as soon as you see that, you kind of know what you need to get done. Uh, like, for instance, I need to start my bunker at four minutes. Uh, I need to uh, produce enough Marines and whatnot. I want another uh, SCV on the map. Hopefully, I guess I I don't think I got that out this game. Let's see, I got the bunker up. Make the little wall, because I know he has some speedlings. Um, you know, my uh, account right now that I'm playing on, obviously he's going to click into my account, but it was like um, pretty low... MMR, I think I'm on this account right now. I am 2177. So that's why I was very careful with this walling. Uh, if I if my account was closer to uh, my higher MMR amounts, then I might not need this. But I feel like it's more likely for a player to get aggressive when they a Zerg player to get aggressive when they see someone's uh, lower MMR. Anyways, uh, see, I'm just going for the Academy Rush build. Looking over at his side. You know, I know the timing of the Spire because I saw the layer start. There's his third. I don't have any scouts out on the map right now, but that's okay. So I get the scan down. Check what he's up to. Oops, lost a couple Marines. Didn't mean to do that. I was just moving out with uh, my force just to like, you know, you want to you wanna walk out with your Marines and Medics a little bit at least. Pick off a Ling or whatever and, and kind of push him back, but... Two of my Marines, for whatever reason, just walked to the side and died. So that wasn't any fun. Hold on one second, guys. My daughter is FaceTiming me. <laughs> all right. Sorry about that. Everything's all set now. Okay, so he's making his mutas right now. I'm just throwing down my turrets, right? I wanted to make sure that I have enough turrets to stop a 2,500 Zerg's Mutas. I have range already on the way. Uh, yeah, I did choose because because the layer was like 254, 255. I decided to do this off two racks. Um, and I believe I add my th third racks before I go for uh, the factory. We'll, we'll double check on that. Um, but... It's easier to basically fit everything in in a situation like this because his mutas can be very, very quick. Now, he he waited to build them. He didn't build them at, like, the quickest time. And you can't control that as the Terran player. Uh, like, they can they can group them up. Some people just insta-make them and send them directly down to try to start picking off SCVs before turrets are made. Uh, he didn't do that, obviously. His first swipe in was just then. So that's, you know, obviously in a situation like that, I could have gone four racks or something. I could have gone factory before... <laughs> you know, uh, but that's all right. So there's my third racks coming up. I'm just kind of zoning. I think that my placement here was really good. Like the Marines are standing in such a place that if the mutas attack them, turrets on one of the sides will hit. They can also quickly respond to these turrets down here. I made a group of five. I spread them like this because if you put them right up, it screws up your gas mining massively. Anyways, I'm making a turret down here as well to catch mutas if they come down. A lot of people love to fly down in this mineral patch uh, because the comm sat's in the way. It's extremely hard to defend, so I always want a turret down there. Okay, let's take a look at what he's up to, right? Looks very normal, very standard stuff. Third base is up. He's going into Lurker Tech. There's the Queen's Nest, not too fast. So yeah, the mutas try to come in, but I zone them out very well there. Very happy with that. I should be starting my gas with two starports. Ah, yes. And when I scanned, I saw that he was already morphing some lurkers. Uh, and 
Yeah, you can see I've scanned a few different locations, like I'm checking for third bases and whatnot. Uh, but I decided to make an add-on on the factory because it seemed like it, it was possible with the speed of the lurkers that he would try some sort of lurker push very quickly. If he does that, you really need the add-on already. And I figured making a, a single siege tank at least would be all right here. All right, so. Yeah, the two starports come out. Here, I'm just kind of like trying to zone his mutas out. He just dives in and does a scout. That's fine. Valorant fan donated $3.33. Someone in the chat for the Korean Valorant finals last bunnies told me your name and that you stream. I like your casting style and enjoyed the broadcast. I don't play StarCraft but I might check out your stream. What did that guy mean by avoid Mario BTW? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I hope I hope you did enjoy the Valorant finals. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, so uh, as my vessels pop out, that's kind of like when I want to move. I think I did some pre-scans to just check so that I could get forward more quickly and just have the vessels reinforce. And I also add the fire bats. This is like something I'm doing all the time now in TVZ against uh, standard playing Zergs because so many people just use stacked Lurker and try to get more greedy. So uh, for people that watch me play a lot, you've definitely seen this where I make a few fire bats and then I dematrix them to bust bust ramps and bust stacked lurker situations anyways i come up here five lurkers spread like that i can't do anything decide to rotate over towards the third see this lurker and he throws down the dark swarm but i'm like this doesn't matter he has like no units here as far as i can tell so the d matrix can still work so the fire bats break everything and i get up And here I messed up. Here I messed up. Like, I didn't have that much left on the D-Matrixes, and I still I still fought, it, like... Oh, he actually did kill that Lurker, though. Then I tried to kill some of this, didn't quite get it. Luckily, I had sent up some more reinforcements. And I have a good amount of medics up here. But I do misplay this now. If I played this area perfectly, then I think this game ends pretty quickly. Because I have enough units here to destroy this base, I think. With just pure micro. Just like dodging and running around. But I screw it up. Watch. So I split the medics. I split three medics up to this group and kept two down with this group. Stimmed up here. I mean, this is obviously plus two marines. I can like bust everything very quickly. So I take down the sunk. And then I'm just trying to kill the hatch. But I right-clicked on it and then went back to macro or something, so I lost all those units. So, see, this was this is one of those situations, and it's kind of funny, right? Because a lot of people who watch, they're like, Artosis got 2k! And honestly, if I had just sat here and micro this, this game might actually end up uh, ending instead of going home to make units, right? If I don't jump home and make units and instead just micro, but it's really hard to make those types of decisions a lot of the time. So it's it's one of those situations where it's like yes I'm banking a lot but you literally can't In do both. Memoriam donated three dollars and thirty three cents. Scan let Artosis return the favor after rushing his plump command center. He put his missile. To no no no. Thanks. All right. So anyways, I, these just stay here and now I get to go into my regular game. Right. Um. So what I've been trying a lot lately, TVZ is uh going into bcs after a certain amount of vessels i like six vessel into bc but like obviously you can't make every game exactly the same you can't make them all perfect but i'm going up into my bc tech i'm taking my third base uh, i definitely want to take a fourth as well I start to attack up here doesn't really work a little bit wasteful there i know that i've got a little bit of an edge right now in the game but it won't necessarily last like if you if you lose a bunch of units trying to kill that base you know, it's... If you don't get it, it's painful, obviously. But I, I've i killed a lot of units. I've made him make a lot of units. I know he doesn't have super high tech or anything yet. So I'm just trying to keep pressure on here. Oh, yeah. And I did uh, make another command center to actually float. This is actually... Um, 
Yeah, it's it's something that I find hard. TVZ is expanding while keeping all this pressure on. So yeah, he starts plaguing here. I'm throwing down the radiates, trying to break the third or the fourth rather. Also, I'm into BC production at this point, making a third starport. All right, let's speed it up a little. He sees starting to pop out, getting that fourth base up. So yeah, Plague obviously a great counter, but what I was trying to do here, uh, because Polypoid is rotationally symmetric, I saw someone do this and I was like, oh, this is brilliant, basically. What you can do on Polypoid uh, is you can sit the BCs on hold position where spores can't hit them, but they can hit the gas. So a move like that is really, really strong. Here, I kind of screwed it up a few times. I'm trying to pull it back, as you can see, but I'm like, there you go. See, that's better. And then eventually he sends Scourge out. But the idea of sending BCs up, like if you are, if they are counterclockwise to you, you can just like destroy this gas and like keep them off this gas a lot. Uh, yeah, I think someone did it in ASL or maybe it was a Caster Musen Rock Star League game or something like that. It was something that I casted, I think, uh, where I, I saw that move for Polypoid specifically. And I was like, oh, that's, that's amazing because really so much of this matchup is about uh, denying gas and because the gas is exactly at the wall uh you can definitely get it there where they have to use air to clear your bc obviously they can hit it with plague but they eventually have to finish it with air okay so now at this point i got my four bases running three gas i've got three port uh bc pumping i uh, got the plus one attack on the way good amount of barracks pumping out I did have a couple of Marines there, so I saw what he was up to. Yeah, the BCs, luckily, I picked that off, so that was really nice. And But then I used a move command. <laughs> and a bunch of Scourge hit. So yeah, at this point, I was just trying to macro well, right? Because I have so many bases. Well, obviously, these two bases are running dry at this point. But, like, right now, I'm just trying to spend. I'm just trying to get units on the map. 186 supply, not bad. Now, at this point, oh yeah, uh, another thing, actually, this is something I've been thinking about a lot as well, is later on in the game, to start going one factory vultures, uh, to try to lay a minefield on one side that's hard to defend. Uh, yeah, I see someone in chat typing, uh, 2,500 player is at 5k. Yes, yes he is, okay. That's... He's still 2,500 MMR, so, like, you guys, with your unrealistic expectations, uh, maybe this is a reality check for you. Anyways, um, right, so this is an idea that I kind of have, because you start banking a lot of minerals, especially when you have a mineral base, when you start getting all these bases, where it's, like, I can't, it's almost impossible to spend. Even pro gamers get pretty high minerals in situations like this. So one thing I was thinking of was when I start banking minerals to get mines and speed and just, like, rally vultures over to an area and just pump vultures and try to lay mines to like make a difficult path for zerg to attack down it's yeah it's something i'm trying out basically okay so at this point i'm feeling like i'm actually gonna win the game I definitely felt pretty good. Kind of screwed up a little bit here. Lost like four vessels. BC falling. I'm still macroing pretty well, I would say. 
Uh, I'm tr I keep trying to take this base. Like, I started Command Center here a few times, and I literally left these BCs here. These BCs end up with, like, 100 kills because he just sends stuff in to kill the CC over and over. Kind of funny, really. <laughs> like, Lings are so strong, man, that my BCs can't beat them. They kill all my <laughs> SCVs there. So I'm still pumping the BCs. I definitely learned some things from this game. A lot of these things I'm doing in this game are like some of my newer ideas that I haven't had that much practice with yet because I normally just sit around and get cheesed on the ladder. I don't get into a lot of honest macro games. But yeah, as you can see, like he just keeps sending lings over here. Look at this 24 kills, 41 kills. Kind of crazy. Want to learn donated $3.33. Is it okay for Zergs to float minerals because they are constrained by lava production and you don't want to produce recklessly? Dark Swarm also seems adequate to keep him alive. Yeah, I mean, it is. Uh, you can bank money with Zerg a, a bit more than with the other races. It's not as punishing because you can make everything at once. Also, uh, it's like, yeah, you can make a lot of Zerglings, and he is, but... That doesn't mean you should spend every single mineral on making zerglings, right? Like you don't you don't need to just have all of your money spent at every single second. That's I, this is actually like a, a fallacy. It's uh, this matchup is not for zerg as dependent upon macro as some other matchups are. Like the the main macro matchup is actually Terran versus Protoss, where like if anyone screws up on macro, that's really 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 bad. Right, and I guess that's probably the matchup you guys see the most because everyone plays Protoss and you watch me. Um, but yeah, TVZ, like obviously from the Terran point of view, you need a lot of macro. Uh, but when Dark Storm comes out, it doesn't matter if you have 50 more Marines, right? You're not getting through the Dark Storm. It doesn't actually make a difference there. Uh, so, but yeah, you, you still have to produce a lot so you can take different parts of the map. But from the Zerg side, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to have Lings. Lings are a great unit. Uh, but you can get very cost efficient against Lings as Terran. That is that is definitely a thing that happens. Anyways, hope that answers your question. Uh, okay, so this was, I think, my main mistake here is this base. I sent three BCs up here, and he just kept making spores, and I ended up losing them. Like I had a hard time getting them in hold position correctly. Uh, he plagued them a couple times. He sent in scourge, and he eventually knocked them out. And I didn't kill the hatch. Uh, and so I kind of came to the realization after this game, if I had brought the BCs and cleared this area, this would have been, first off, a very easy clear. You don't think about it as much because they're basically depleted. I guess he technically still has some gas on this one, but there's no minerals and everything. But honestly, if I kill this area, then suddenly we don't have units coming from this direction, and I can stage attacks over here a lot more easily. So I think that, that was a big mistake. Also, I could have sent the BCs, obviously, over in this area. I didn't know he had this yet because it's brand new, but yeah. Yeah, and anyways, when I lost the BCs there, I suddenly had a gut-wrenching feeling. I'm like, oh, God, I'm not playing as well now. This is hard. And I was like, I think I'm going to lose this now. Ouch. Didn't realize there were that many lings up there. I think I had a right click. Because I didn't want them to come up and get stuck on the ramp attacking this. But yeah, now he's killed that base. And it doesn't go very well from here. Sixty-one kills. Sixty-eight kills. My god. Seventy kills on this guy. <laughs> He's crazy. Yeah, I can't quite kill that hatch either. I did end up getting that one, but that was it. Okay, GG. So that was game one. So I ended up losing that, but I was like, you know what? I played very well. I was very happy with it. Um. Yeah. I, I was. I was pretty happy with that game. I felt pretty pumped going into game two.